Shut up and sit down. Hello everyone, I am the Cyber Rear Viewer, welcome to my channel. Um, so I posted a video the other day about uh, the desk and holder that I was making and I got a question on the uh, uh, YouTube about uh, how to make the threads in Fusion. So this is a video on how to do that. It's probably going to be fairly lengthy because I'm going to actually walk you through the process from scratch. Um, but uh, hopefully it'll be informative and you'll learn something and um, we'll get on with it. Um, okay, so switching over to Fusion here. Uh, here is what we're uh, make, go, going to make. This is the actual desk and holder al already designed and you can see the timeline here across the bottom which is a feature of Fusion. So we're going to switch over to uh, this design here. First thing I want to do is change the units to millimeters. Uh, I like designing in millimeters when I do 3D printing because uh, when you have like a you know 0.2 millimeter uh, resolution or a 0.4 uh, millimeter uh, nozzle, uh, you like to make things in uh, sizes uh, that are commensurate with those. So if you have a 0.2 millimeter, you know, resolution you're printing in, you'd like you want to make something that is, you know, going to be an even multiple of 0.2. Um, if you're printing in 0.3, you want to make something in a multiple of 0.3. So uh, something like that. Um, okay, so real quick, uh, we're going to start by creating a, th uh, a sketch on the bottom. We're going to create a circle at 75. Uh, millimeters wide. That will be the uh, inner diameter of the uh, part. I think it's the inner diameter. Um, and then we're going to create two more circles and I will explain in just a moment uh, what those circles are for. So one will be bigger um, and one is going to be smaller. Um, and see these are uh, concentric circles by the way. I selected the same origin and you can see the constraint here which makes them concentric. So we're going to dimension the outer circle here uh, real quick and it's going to be uh, the uh, circle diameter here plus 20 which gives us 10 millimeters on each side and then we're going to dimension the inside circle here which is going to be uh, the diameter minus 12 millimeters and I'll explain uh, why we're doing that in a minute so just pull that dimension out so we have it so you can see here outside uh, center inside um, I think that's all we want to do here oh one more thing we want to do here so um, in the actual design I created these little U's um, for lack of a better description uh, so I'll, I'll draw those in right now while we're here it'll it um, it'll actually complicate some things later on but I just want to show it to you real quick so the way we did that is an arc I want to do a three-point arc zoom in here uh, what I did is I started uh, roughly about here and you can see the little X snaps to the the perimeter of the circle um, so we'll start about here we'll take it to roughly about there um, and then bring it back uh, roughly about there uh, so that creates the little U and then the way that I uh, kind of get it all the way around is I go into sketch and I say create circular pattern I select the arc um, I select the center point, um, and then I tell it that I, I'll see six, nope, let's go with eight, eight looks pretty reasonable. All right, so eight, there you go, now you got the, got all these things around, so stop sketch. Okay, so uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to draw the cylinder down. Um, in this case, that's going to be this circle plus this circle. Uh, we'll create a new body. We want it to be a negative 75 uh, millimeters down. And there you go, done, new body. Uh, the fastest way to get this to be three millimeters around is to click the shell here um, and then say that you want to shell it at three millimeters and then you have a three millimeter width um, tube with the bottom. The bottom's three millimeters, sides are three millimeters. Very straightforward. Um, okay, turn our uh, top back on. Um, so now what we want to do, we want to pull it up um, so the fastest way, again, let me turn the body off. Let me first name this guy body. Um, I'm gonna turn it off uh, so it's hidden. And then I want to uh, take these, um, see how creating those arcs um, actually allows us to select it and we can pull it up. Um, so there you go, we wanna pull it up five millimeters um, and that creates the top uh, with that little ring thing there. And then I want to select the, this is where the threads come into play. Uh, the threads go down into the body. So now I want to uh, press pull this guy and I want to go down 10 millimeters um, and I want it to join. 
Um, because we had this body turned off when we created this, it didn't automatically join to the body. Um, so that's exactly what we wanted. All right, we're gonna turn our sketch off. This is the top part. We're gonna very quickly create the threads here, select the outside ring. We wanna select modeled. We want full length. Uh, we want them to be 70 millimeters um, and we want them to be the thread pitch to be uh, three. Uh, so why did we select 70 instead of uh, 75 or something else? Well, uh, what I found is, so the threads are cutting into the um, into the part, uh, into the part that we had there. So we actually had that 12 millimeters um, thick um, ring there, uh, which is actually six millimeters on each side. So that still gives us, if by selecting 70 here, um, that still gives us a fair amount of um, material that is uh, uh, not associated with the thread. You can see here how it's super thick down here where the threads are thin and not so thick here. Um, and so <coughs> that <coughs> allows us to cut into that actual part and saves a little bit of time. So turn that guy off, turn this guy on. We are gonna do another thread. We're gonna select the inside here, select modeled. We do not want full length. Uh, we want a 10 millimeter thread length. We want it to match at 70 millimeters and we want it to match at a pitch of three. Um, and so what you can see real quick is it's created those and it's cut into uh, the, the thickness of the body there. Um, so there you go. Um, that is what we we're looking for, right? Right on. Um, okay, whoops, sorry, I just rotated that guy around. Um, and so now we turn on uh, the top and you're like, hey, what's going on? Does it, did it work? We're not sure. Well, the easiest way to do that is we do an inspect uh, sectional analysis. We select the top. Um, we rotate, um, let me get in a correct view here so it makes sense. We rotate this guy, cut it 90 degrees, boom, there you go. Um, and then you can zoom in and you can see there's your sectional analysis and the threads line up perfectly. Um, so interesting thing here, um, when we created the threads um, and we said 70, uh, we know the inside perimeter was 75. When we created 70, um, it actually thickened up these walls. Uh, you can see that they are now no longer three millimeters. It thickened them up, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but it did. So if we go back and we say edit the feature, now that we have the cross-sectional analysis, right, we can change this, uh, say, to 72. And you can see now the threads don't, don't, don't match up because we made the, the top, um, um, and we'll change it back to three. So we made the top at 70. Uh, but you can see that it is now closer to the the three millimeters that we have there so uh, 72 minus 3 um, is uh, 75 uh, I don't I think this uh, 3 is uh, um, three millimeters could be it, but it, not entirely sure <laughs> um, that's one thing that I've been meaning to research um, so uh, now, if we wanted to leave this at 72, we could very simply fix this by going back and editing this feature. Um, instead of setting it at 70, we set it at 72. We set it at a three, um, and we click OK, and there you go, the threads match. And you'll notice that now this is super thick, because um, this is still uh, six uh, millimeters wide, because we did the, uh, the offset there. So uh, that is as simple as it is to make uh, uh, threads. Uh, we can turn our sectional analysis off. Uh, one thing I want to show you is so we're going to uh, name this guy top just because I want to make sure that I can show you guys something. I want to turn the body off here. Uh, so I saw this video online about making threads in Fusion and 3D printing, and the guy, there was no audio in the video. He didn't explain what he was doing and why he was doing it, but he filleted uh, these ridges. Right now they're flat, and he filleted them. Um, I have filleted my last couple designs at a 0.2 millimeter which rounds over these edges. Um, uh, I don't know if it helps or if it doesn't. Um, when I get ambitious, I'll probably print the exact same design with out the fillet and see if it makes a difference. But what I will tell you is with the fillet, it works well. Um, I don't know if it's because of the fillet or not, um, but it is what it is. Uh, so I'm filleting it now until I can do some troubleshooting. So we will also fillet the inside thread as well. Um, 0.2 millimeters, round that guy over, um, and there you go, now you have matching threads. 
Um, so there you go. That's how to make threads. Um, for the desiccant holder, we created holes down the side. That's pretty straightforward. You can, you know, create a sketch, um, create vertical holes, and then pattern it. You can use the hole command here. Uh, you could, uh, you know, press pull. Um, however you like, there's lots of different ways to do this. Um, one thing uh, to note here is I did fill it um, for more of an ergonom ergonomic reason. I fill at the bottom here. Um, I think I filleted that one, no, two millimeters. Yeah, filleted the bottom two millimeters. I fill it uh, the top uh, here, these edges. I fill it uh, all of these edges. Let me do a uh, tangent chain. Nope. Um, so this, uh, when I mentioned earlier, this is where um, uh, it complicates things. Now you have to select all these edges manually to fillet them. Um, it's a little bit of a pain in the, you know what. Um, but... I definitely think it produces a better result, and I will tell you, filleting this edge as well. You can also go ahead and do it now while you're doing it. Um, uh, the beauty of Fusion is at any time you can come in and you can edit. Um, you can see there I missed one. That guy right there. So I'm going to fill it this guy for one millimeter, and then I also filleted. Um, these handles. Uh, you can do this in any order, I think. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the last time I did it, I actually filleted these first and then filleted the top. Um, but it was um, a straight uh, chain, so fill with this guy one. Um, click OK. Um, so that creates a nice, um, smooth, easy um, handle. It's not uh, too rough to and, and the hands. It actually helps a little. The fillet helps a little bit, getting the uh, the tool out and, and popping off the print bed. Uh, so there you go. It, it's that simple. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please, as always, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, um, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Also, I would appreciate if you were to uh, subscribe. That helps me out. Um, and that's what they say. It helps me out. Not entirely sure. Anyway, thanks, everyone. Have a great night.